This is John Martinka, and business owners, if you are even thinking of exiting your company in the next 10 years, keep the seven rules of exiting and preparing your business for sale that I'm going to give you here. Why? Because many studies predict there's going to be a glut of businesses on the market. In 2011, PricewaterhouseCoopers predicted that two-thirds, that's right, two-thirds of companies doing five to fifty million in sales were going to change hands in the next 10 years. So if you would like to exit your business with style, grace, and more money, pay attention. First of all, cash is king, cash flow is king. The more money you make, the more profit you show, the higher the price you're going to get for your business. And that carries over also to the balance sheet. Your balance sheet needs to be strong, so keep running that business, even if you've decided to sell, as if you are in a growth mode. Number two, reduce dependencies, especially if it's on you, the owner. If you're involved in too much, too many little things, start delegating. Get rid of key customer concentrations. Don't have a vendor that is all important. Build a team, not just key employees who, if they walk, part of your business walks out the door with them. Number three, growth can hide a lot of operational warts. Buyers are going to overlook any operational deficiencies if you're growing fast, both top and bottom line. Number four, the only thing worse than no deal is a bad deal. Screen your buyer. Make it someone you want to sell to. Make it someone who can afford it. It's going to make their payments because you're probably going to be, have a note for at least something. Someone who you think will take care of your customers and, more importantly, your employees. Number five, use your team. Use your advisory team. Don't try to play lawyer. Don't try to play tax accountant. Don't try to play intermediary. Let the intermediary take the emotional aspect out of it for you. Don't be like one seller recently who halfway through the process decided he didn't want to pay his lawyer anymore. He started reviewing the legal documents himself and he didn't understand them. So he created problems and thought the other attorney was trying to bully him. While his attorney knew it was just standard legal language. Number six, what makes you a good business person does not necessarily make you a good deal person. In business, you're trying to do different things that are going to happen in a deal. In a deal, there's a lot of maneuvering, negotiating, back and forth. It's not just, here's a product, here's how we price it, here's how we sell it. And number seven, it's not what you get, it's what you keep. Don't be like Bob. Bob sold his company and he wanted a certain price. Let's just say it was a million dollars. He took a deal from the buyer that had him taking cash, a note, an employment contract, and a consulting agreement. The employment contract was fully taxable, ordinary income, not capital gains. The consulting agreement, ordinary income, not capital gains, plus he paid all of the 15% FICA and Medicare on it. Taxes play a part. How you get paid plays a part. When you get paid may play a part. It's not what you get, it's what you keep. So again, if you want to sell your business and exit with style, grace, and more money, pay attention to these seven rules.